I try to be so positive for you guys. I try to laugh. I try to bring humor. And then I do these stories and I'm like, holy, like what? Welcome back to the comment section. I'm Brett Cooper. We are talking about a disgustingly filthy, immoral, grotesque, I don't know how many synonyms I can use to describe this story today about a teacher and her husband. You guys might have seen this on the news over the last year or so, but it is back in the news cycle because the husband just got sentenced. But before we get into this story, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to this channel if you have not already, and ring that notification bell so that you never miss a comment section or off the clock segment. I'm just gonna read you this headline that I saw, and I just have to shout out Corinne Tatum, Brandon Tatum's wife, because she posted posted this on her story and I was in awe because I had not seen this last year. I don't know how I missed this story. I think that this came out before I was even doing the show. So maybe I just was not as clued in, but I mean, I DM turn was like, holy crap. I'm talking about this. This is disgusting. This is the headline she posted. Cop whose teacher wife fed students cupcakes laced with his sperm is jailed for 100 years. Now, as somebody who had never heard of this story before, this was just a lot to take in at once. This is disgusting. We have a police officer. His wife is a teacher somehow the sperm gets in these cupcakes and they decide to give it to the students. I want to know everything. I want to know how they figured this all out. So I started doing a deep dive. It is more horrific than I could have ever imagined. I mean, these people are literally sick. Now, like I said, this really blew up last year. I think it was in February that they found out about the semen debacle, but they had already been arrested. Their names are Dennis and Cynthia Perkins, and they literally fed her middle school English students semen cupcakes. Here they are. They look like a normal couple. She's pretty. He looks normal. Again, this is like very unassuming, but that is not all they did. Somebody commented under one of the articles and said, this is crazy and all, but how do the students know what nut tastes like? Or did they randomly test the cupcakes for nut? Confusing as Literally, my first thought is like, how did they know? Uh, and then somebody replied and said, the actions were filmed and discovered with other child pornography when they were busted for raping a minor. Like, that's not funny at all. Like, that is disgusting. God, every day I lose hope. I try to be so positive for you guys. I try to laugh. I try to bring humor. And then I do these stories and I'm like, holy, like what? There is no way in hell I am not homeschooling my children. No way. This all started back in 2019 when the couple was first arrested after the authorities got a tip from the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Their home was raided and the authorities found pictures of them nude with children and cameras with child rape on them. Up in their attic, it was all hidden, it was disgusting. Here's an article from that time. This was December 17th, 2019. Ex-teacher husband indicted on 150 counts after child sex abuse probe. Now in court, Cynthia, the teacher, she admitted to giving her students the sperm cupcakes. That was not anything that they like found evidence of in their house. They had just seen the pictures of them nude with children. And in court, she said, okay, I also did this. I am pleading guilty. And she testified against her husband on many of these charges, claiming that she had been manipulated by him. So as a part of this plea deal, 68 of her 72 charges were dropped. She also filed for divorce immediately after being arrested. So she only got 41 years. Somebody replied and said, how is she even eligible for a plea deal? What is she testifying for? She recorded him. She serve the cupcakes, she should be facing the same amount of time as him. I completely agree. I'm glad that we have more information about her husband and the types of things that he did, but just saying that she wasn't involved, like, no, you were. You gave those to your students. You took pictures with those children. You also raped a child with him, just standing on the sidelines and kind of like helping, that doesn't make it any better. So like I said, she got 41 years earlier this year, I think it was back in May or so, but his trial only just now ended and he was given 100 years, no possibility for parole or probation or anything like that. He was charged with rape, two counts of trial battery under the age of 13, video voyeurism, and multiple counts of child pornography. I mean, it is sickening. He also pleaded guilty like his wife, which is probably the only good part of the story because in doing so, the children who were his victims did not have to come into court and testify and relive those traumatizing experiences. Thank God. Somebody replied and said, maybe the parents who homeschool got a point. Yeah, you think? After all we have talked about, after everything you have seen from COVID to now, everything that is being exposed in classrooms, you still think that you can blindly send kids into schools and think that they're going to be okay? Now, obviously, there are still families that believe that that is the best option. There are some families that that is the only option for them, whether it's lifestyle, financially, whatever. If that is the case, that is okay. I'm not shaming you. You just have to be so vigilant and so aware and so engaged in your child's education with the adults that they are around. You cannot trust anybody. And that is so sad. Like, I, I was seeing something on Alex Clark's story the other day, and she was doing a poll with parents of like, would you allow your children to be alone at somebody's house for this amount of time? Would you let them go to a park? How is this different than the way that you were raised? And like overwhelmingly, 
people had no trust, which is also very sad because, you know, you want to raise children that are independent. They're able to do things by themselves. But like in this world where you cannot trust the adults that are supposed to be protecting your children all day long, it's like, what other option do you have? It's sad, but that's the reality of the world we live in. And you kind of have to strike a balance, but it's just interesting. Libs of TikTok also posted this yesterday, which I think just drives this entire point home in a really sad and sick way. But she said, we have a serious groomer teacher problem in this country. That is putting it mildly. Chicago school's watchdog finds hundreds of employees groomed, sexually assaulted students. One Chicago school administrator took a student to a play and took her on trips to Vegas, Los Angeles, and abroad, the report said. Now, strangely, the comments under this post were not outraged. The majority of these comments were claiming that this could have never happened and they won't read anything written by Fox and things like this. Like, look at your priests first. And we also talk about the number of pastors and GOP politicians that fall under the same category. Somebody replied to that and said, could we talk about the people around kids full time first? Now, before I get into breaking down those replies, here's another non-Fox source for you guys. New report details sexual misconduct allegations in the Chicago school system. This is a real thing. This information was found. This is not Fox trying to be like, oh, look at all those lib teachers. No, this is a real problem. It should not be a left or right issue. The sexualization of children is a cultural problem across the board, and we should be able to condemn it no matter what political party the offender identifies in. We are so far gone that people see stories about children being groomed and sexually exploited, and they immediately get defensive because somebody they don't like is posting about it. If you are so upset about one side of the political aisle being the one having this conversation and their publications are writing about it, then maybe hold your own people accountable. If you're so upset that we're talking about liberal teachers, if you're so upset that libs of TikTok is the one who is posting all of this, then maybe get your publications to talk about it more because it is happening in every corner of our society. This is not just a liberal situation. But I will say, it is food for thought that the right is the only group that continuously points out this behavior and the left is the group that constantly rationalizes it, finds excuses, and tries to make it a partisan issue. It is not partisan. There is an entire generation of children who are being groomed and exploited and are growing up in a society that sexualizes them and does not protect them. That is something that we should, across the board, be able to fight against. And the fact that we can't, like that is the most sickening part of this entire story. Guys, we are adding new comment section content every single day, so make sure that you are subscribed to this channel and ring that bell so that you never miss a video. See you next time.